relatively small church. We have a lot of folks that can contribute, and uh, that's a blessing. Thank you. We're going to go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5 this evening, and the subject is being ambassadors for Christ. I, I particularly left this. We could have covered it last week, but I wanted to take a little bit more time on it. Uh, the last chapter or so, last couple of chapters, has been about our, our, our ministry, uh, our service for the Lord. One aspect of it was, I guess in a sense, the negative when he said in chapter 4, verse 1, seeing we have this ministry, as we've received mercy, we faint not. So a negative in the sense he's saying, don't quit, you know, don't faint, don't give up. Uh, same chapter, chapter 4, verse 16, uh, he says, though our, uh, for, for which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. You know, don't give up. God is, is giving you strength as you go. And the positive is, in chapter 5, verse 9, uh, do serve. He says, wherefore we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. You know, keep serving the Lord. Don't, don't give up. We, um, we saw some of the motives we have to, to keep serving the Lord. One of them we looked at was the, the confidence of heaven. Because we know we're on our way to heaven, that should give us a, a motive to, to serve the Lord. Now look at chapter 5, verse 8. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Wherefore we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. You know, knowing that we, we have a home in heaven, I should give us that confidence of, uh, of serving him and a motivation to serve him. In, in verse 10, we're motivated to, to please the Lord. For we, mu we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body, according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Uh, we want to please the Lord. We don't want to have a bad report as we stand before the Lord. And then we saw in verse 14, uh, the love of Christ constraineth us. And that's not talking about so much our love for him. It's talking about his love for us. That's a motive to serve. You know, when you know somebody loves you, you, you want to do more for them. And uh, you know, what a blessing it is to know that, uh, that the Lord loves us. Well, uh, the other motive we have for serving the Lord is you might call it a commission from God. And we're going to read in verses 17 through 21. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away, behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation, to wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So the commission from God. God calls us to take the message of reconciliation. You know, as Christians, one of the best and most mature reasons to serve the Lord is just because God tells us. <laughs> you know, uh, not because we feel like it, not because of the need or anything like that. It's just God says that's what we're to do, and that's a mature way to, to operate. God says go. Uh, in verse 18, he talks about the ministry of reconciliation. Uh, that's, that's the ministry that we have. In verse 19, he talks about he's committed unto us the word of reconciliation. You, you know, you think of passages like, Matthew 11, where Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You know, there's just so many verses like that. That's the word of reconciliation. You know, God has hope for people. God has uh, peace. God has, God has what people really want, if, if they would you know, be honest with themselves. Uh, we have that word. What a blessing. And he says, he uses the word there, he's committed unto us. This is a commitment that God has given to us. Uh, he's trusted us with something very important. And, and I think you might say in verse 20, you see the heart of reconciliation. It's as though God did beseech you by us. You know, it's just as if Jesus were saying, listen, I, I love you, I want you, I, I have what you need. That's the heart uh, of this message that we have. Uh, the word reconcile means to, 
to cause to be friendly again. And I guess to, to go back to this, you'd have to go all the way back to before sin. <laughs> you know, Adam and Eve, boy, they had a wonderful relationship with the Lord till sin reared, reared its ugly head. And I guess that that's what you'd have to look all the way back to. That's when we were friendly in Adam and Eve before sin. They walked with the Lord in the cool of the evening and you had fellowship with the Lord and so on. Uh, to, to bring back to harmony, to reunite. So we have the ministry of reconciliation. Well, to do that, that means, he says here, that we're ambassadors. Ambassadors. That, that's what I want us to look at tonight. He uses the words there in verse 20, now then. Uh, that has to do with, uh, because of what he said before, we are. So I, I want you to understand this concept tonight. We are ambassadors. Are we going to be good ones or bad ones? <laughs> you know, uh, sometimes, uh, you know, our Aussie athletes will go overseas, and boy, they'll be good ambassadors. You know, people will say, yeah. Sometimes they'll go overseas, and they'll be bad ambassadors. <laughs> they get kicked off the plane for being drunk or something. Uh, you know, whatever. Uh, we're ambassadors. The question is, are we going to be good ones? Now, some things about ambassadors. One is ambassadors are chosen to represent their country. You know, when, when somebody represents Australia, uh, America, uh, Russia, China, whatever, uh, they're not there representing themselves. They're representing our country. They're the ambassador from Australia. Well, as Christians, we represent Christ. You know, as we're living our lives, uh, we're not representing ourselves. We're not representing some cultural thing. We're representing an eternal, uh, heavenly thing. In chapter 4, verse 5, he says, We preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. Man, that's, that's an important thing. You know, God has a purpose in making us ambassadors. Uh, we're to represent him. Like he, he said there in, in verse 20, We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. I, I've always marveled. God didn't give this job to robots. <laughs> God didn't give this job to angels. God didn't even just write it in the sky. God gave this, he committed this to us. We have the, the ministry and the word, and we should have the heart of reconciliation. But also, God has a purpose in that he wants us to present his message. You know, that's what an ambassador does. You know, he comes, physically speaking, he comes to the whoever, you know, the person in the country they have to communicate to, and he says, here's a message from our country. And, and he presents that. Well, as Christians, we present God's message. And God told us, Mark 16, 15, for instance, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. God's message is the gospel. His message, like he says here, is be reconciled to God. That's what people need. And it's hard sometimes to talk to people about the Lord. Uh, I get the same thing. You know, it's It's hard. Uh, we have a workman been working at our house this week and, you know, trying to talk to him. And uh, a lot of times I just wait till somebody brings it up. Being a pastor, they just about always will. And, uh, you know, then you, you start to talk to them. And, uh, but it, it's hard sometimes to get the message of the Lord across to them. Uh, they're so full of their own, their own ideas. The, the message is the gospel, that Christ died for our sins, was buried, rose again. And, you know, there's so much in the gospel. We can see from the gospel that God loves us. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Uh, we can see from the gospel that we're sinful. You know, God's not foolish. He's not going to come and die for us and die for our sins if, if he didn't need to. If there was some other way. The Bible says all of sin. Uh, you know, the gospel shows us that Christ is the only way. That's God's way. Uh, we represent Christ. Uh, we're given the message. There's a verse in 1 John, let me just read it to you, where he says, This then is the message which we've heard of him. Okay, here's the message. And declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. There's the message that we have. We have the light that people need. And what a blessing it is that God gives us this message to, to share with others. You know, to be a, uh, an ambassador, it means that we're chosen to represent uh, our country. Uh, to be an ambassador for Christ means we, we represent Christ. We share his message. But you know as well, an ambassador has to be a citizen of the country he represents. It's been uh, 
I guess it was last year and, and into this year, where we've had all this hoo-ha about people couldn't serve in Parliament because they were represent, you know, they from two different countries. Hasn't it been strange? <laughs> I, I, imagine, I imagine this has been happening for a hundred years, but now all of a sudden we're we're all concerned about it. But anyway, it, it fits with my sermon, so I'll use it. Uh, because, you know, as, as Christians, we're not people from two countries. We're people who are people of the Lord. And I think that's important. Uh, number one, we need to make sure we do, are part of God's country. Uh, have you been born into God's kingdom? Have you received God's message? You know, it's no good trying to share God's message if you haven't received it yourself. But as well, we need to realize we're, we're not from two countries. Uh, we're not from here and, and from heaven as well. See, when you try to, uh, to hold on to this world and hold on to heaven both, you're going to be in trouble. I worked one summer at a, a camp for blind people when I was a young man. And uh, some of the camps would be for old people, you know, like 40 and above kind of thing. <laughs> and we had one old guy. He must have been pretty old. I can't remember. But I was trying to get him into a boat. I was, you know, I was one of the workers there and he got one foot on the dock and he got one foot in the boat and I don't know what happened but that boat started going out and uh, you know there's only you get a little bit older and there's only so far you can stretch <laughs> and he ended up in in the water and that's a you know humorous it was humorous to me it wasn't to him but <laughs> uh, but you know you, you put that with earth and heaven and man you're in trouble and if you try to to say, well, I'm of this kingdom, I'm of that kingdom, you're going to have to choose. Choose you this day whom you'll serve, you know, Joshua said uh, to the nation of Israel. We, we all grow up in a culture, but we're all saved out of our culture. It's not our culture that saves us. Uh, the verse I, I look to on that is 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 18, when he talks about the, the traditions from our fathers. The traditions from our fathers. Let me read you the verse. 1 Peter 1.18, he says, For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold, from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers. See, we're saved out of our culture and, and our family and our heritage and, and so on. And we're saved into God's kingdom. Uh, th that's so important. You know, sometimes I'll hear people talk about their, their people. It can be all different different ones. But listen, if you're saved, your people are the people of God. Uh, you, you know, for me, it's not America. It's not even my family. Listen, I've, <laughs> in a negative way, I guess I've abandoned my family uh, to come and, and preach the gospel here. Uh, and some, there's some things about that I regret, but I don't regret serving the Lord. Uh, you know, we do, we're, not, we're not of two kingdoms. And, and a lot of the problems we have if we're going to be ambassadors, if we're going to serve the Lord, uh, we need to see he's, he's number one, that in all things he might have the preeminence. Uh, ambassadors uh, are chosen to represent their country. Secondly, ambassadors are provided for by the kingdom they represent. Uh, again, you know, as when we send our, our ambassadors overseas, uh, we don't say, well, good luck. Hope you can get a job once you get there. <laughs> Support yourself. No, we, you know, we support them. And usually pretty well, you know, we look after them, make sure that everything's taken care of. Well, God does that for us. God says he'll supply our needs. In Philippians 4, he says, But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Now, that doesn't mean we don't have to work. Uh, you know, you, you look at Matthew chapter 6, and uh, you know, there's, there's things that we need to do. But we need to understand it's not our job that supplies for us. It's the Lord. And if... If that job keeps me from serving the Lord, God can give me a better job. God can give me a different job. Now, I know that's easy for me to say, but I've lived that. I've not always been a pastor. Uh, we, the Bible tells us we don't have to worry about food and clothing and house. It comes with the job. Uh, the reference there is Matthew chapter 6. And I mean, you all know, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these things shall be added unto you. The verses before that, Jesus is talking about this very thing, and he says, Matthew 6, 28, Why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. 
They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? We need to put the Lord first. Now, that includes things like working hard and being honest and you know, all of those things. But, but be careful. Uh, don't look to the world for what you need. Look to the Lord for what you need. Uh, we're not representing some poor country. Heaven is our home, and, and it's the king of glory. He also supplies protection. You know, for our ambassadors, uh, we, we have uh, uh, guards, and, and there's things in place to, to try and protect them. Well, our protection, really, it comes from the Lord. Put it this way, nothing happens to you that God can't control. We know that all things work together for good to them that love God. Uh, we're not talking here about foolishness. Uh, you know, one of Satan's temptations to Jesus was, cast yourself down. <laughs> you know, God's not, God's not wanting us to be foolish. Don't jump off a bridge and say, well, God will catch me. Uh, you know, use, use your brain. We don't want to pres presume upon the Lord, but we do we need to trust the Lord. Uh, and, and don't make it, you know, sometimes we trust the Lord because there's nothing else we can do. <laughs> but uh, we need to be careful that we just trust the Lord. Trust Him for uh, our supplies. Trust Him for our protection. The Bible says, spiritually speaking, that all of God's resources are available to us. Uh, I love 2 Peter chapter 1 and, and verse, verse 3. He puts it like this. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Yeah, we have every spiritual resource we need. Everything for the, the conflict before us, the, the, the difficulties we face. Uh, the Lord ha has those there for us. Uh, ambassadors are provided for by the kingdom they represent. Uh, ambassadors represent uh, the country that, that calls them. And then thirdly, ambassadors are called home before war is declared. You ever notice that? We haven't had a much, much wars lately, but if you notice that they've been having these different people coming and going from the consulates with Russia and different things. Now, they're kind of, I hope, playing around with things, but, you know, when a war is declared, boy, the first thing they do is they pull all their people out. And, uh, you know, uh, God hasn't declared war on the, on the world yet, but he's going to. In uh, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 5 there, where, where we are, you know, the Bible talks about the fact that we can be confident. Life or death. I read the verses once, but 2 Corinthians 5 verse, verse 6, he says, Therefore we're always confident, knowing that while we're at home in the body, we're absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We're confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. We can know that uh, when, when the time is right, when God is going to deal with this world, um, he's going to take us out. He's going to take us home to, to be with him. Uh, ambassadors are called home before war is declared. Uh, you read through the book of Revelation, and it's called the wrath of God that's going on there. In uh, 2 Thessalonians, he, he talks about the fact that we're saved uh, from the wrath to come. In uh, 2 Thessalonians 5, verse 9, he's not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus. Uh, in, in 2 Thessalonians uh, 1, uh, verse 7, no, I'm sorry, I'm looking in 1 Thessalonians here. Yeah, 2 Thessalonians 1, verse 7, he says, you who are troubled, rest with us. You know, sometimes as you look around the world, you can think, man, the world's in trouble. And, and it can it can get you going. You know, you can get a bit worried about it. But we need to understand, when Jesus comes again, he'll take care of us. You who are troubled, rest with us. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power, when he shall come to be glorified in his saints and to be admired in all them that believe, because our testimony among you was believed in that, that day. Wherefore also we pray always for you that our God would count you worthy of, of, of your calling. Now he's just saying, well, we don't have to be concerned about what God is going to do. 
uh, God, we represent uh, heaven. We represent the Lord. And uh, we won't be here when, when war breaks out. And let me tell you, there is wrath to come. There is wrath to come. You read the book of Revelation. Uh, I can't understand it all, but listen, I can understand enough of it to know I don't want to be there when that stuff's going on. <laughs> um, and uh, God says we won't. Let me ask you, are you confident that if you were to die or the Lord were to return for his own, that you'd be safe? Yeah. See, that, that's what we're talking about here tonight. Uh, to be an ambassador, you have to represent that country. You have to be a citizen of that country. And, uh, you know, for, for you to be safe from the wrath to come, you, you need to be part of the Lord. You need to know the Lord Jesus Christ. In 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 16, he says, The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. The dead in Christ shall rise first, and we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. And here, here's the end of the chapter. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. If you looked at that in a different way, you might think, oh, that doesn't sound very comforting. But for Christians it is. There's wrath to come. He says, the dead in Christ shall rise. We which are alive will be caught up to be with the Lord. Are you confident that that's you? That you know Jesus Christ is your Savior? Not, not by works of righteousness, he says. Not by a feeling. Not by a culture. Not by uh, you know, some ceremony that somebody's done to you. But by faith in the, in the Christ of the Bible. The Bible says that Christ died for our sins. He did it because we're sinners. He did it because sin condemns us to hell. But you know, the main reason he did it is because he loves us. It's not just the practical side. It's the personal side. God loves us. And he proved that love toward us. Uh, let me ask you, do you need to be reconciled to God? Uh, the message of Christianity is be reconciled to God. Do you need that? Uh, if you're a Christian, the Bible says... We are ambassadors. And I think this is a thought we need to keep in our mind on a regular basis. You know, we represent the Lord. That means it makes a difference how we dress. It makes a difference how we talk, how we live, how we treat people, and how we speak to folks. You, know, you hear people say, boy, I gave them a piece of my mind. Uh, listen, don't give away too much of that. You can't spare it. Uh, and, and you need to remember... They're gonna, you might be the only Christian they know. And if you treat them in an ungodly fashion, uh, it's going to reflect on the one we represent. We're ambassadors. We bear, we bear his name. We carry his message. And I think there's a reason he, he ends that chapter with verse, the verse that he does, because that's, that's really the, uh, the basis of our message. He hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. See, we're ambassadors, and that's the message that we, we carry to people. And Jesus said in John 20, verse 21, As the Father has sent me, even so send I you. You think about how Jesus came. It was sacrificial for Him to come. It, it, he suffered to come for us. There, there's a whole lot of things involved, but He did it because He loves us. And He was, he was obedient uh, to His Father. As God sent Jesus, Jesus has sent us. We're ambassadors. Are we faithful ambassadors? 2 Corinthians chapter 6 is where we'll be going next. And he says, We then as workers together with him beseech you also that you receive not the grace of God in vain. And we've received the grace of God. Don't make it useless in your life. Be that ambassador. Share that message of reconciliation. In verse 2, he just talks about the fact that now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Now is when people need to hear it. It's not later. It's not some other time or place. In verse 3, he says, Giving no offense in anything that the ministry be not blamed. Listen, we need to live as, as children of the king. He says, In all things have proved ourselves as the ministers of God. And then he goes on. In much patience and afflictions and, and so on. We'll, we'll be looking at that in the weeks to come. But, you know, we need to understand, we represent the Lord. And wherever we are, wherever we go, we need to be the one who stands for Jesus. You know, sometimes we'll be the only one. It's easy, you know, when you're with a whole bunch of Christians who are keen to, to serve the Lord. It's easy to stand for the Lord then. But when you're the only one that's standing for the Lord, that's, that's a little different. That's harder. 
But listen, when you go as an ambassador to a country, a lot of times you might be the only one there. And you represent your country. And any countryman that's in trouble, they come to you and say, oh, please help me. <laughs> it would be a hard job being an ambassador on a physical basis. But as spiritually, we stand for the Lord wherever we are. We're his ambassadors. Now, I thought it would be good to end this evening with uh, page 322, stand up for Jesus. Let, let's do that. Page 322, come on up, uh, the musicians, and uh, let's sing, I don't know how many verses that has.